Beginning from today, we will start our class on the benefits of the Vajra Guru Mantra. I think it will take us two days to complete this class, today and tomorrow. Why do we need to study the benefits of the Vajra Guru Mantra? In the past two days, Composer Tom Lojo had given the classes to the Tibetan Drumos and Lamas uh, on this particular text, and many of them made the aspiration to chant the Pamasambhava mantra for 100,000 times. Many of you probably also heard of it. And many told me that uh, they want to chant it as well. So I thought to myself, well, maybe I should translate this text into Chinese language as well. Because previously, I requested a composer from Lojo to give teachings on this. And then since many of you asked me whether you should also chant it, uh, so I looked into this text. And then I realized that this text looked very familiar, and I probably had already translated it. And when I look back into the whole translation, apparently I had already finished translating it over 10 years ago, uh, back in 2009. It was the translation I did right after we studied the White Lotus, the Seven Line Prayer. For that reason, I don't need to translate it again. And in the next two days, I will be giving this teaching to all of you. If you also want to make the aspiration to chant, for example, uh, how many times, and then you can submit the number. In terms of the time limit, it is from now till the Parinirvana anniversary of Ponsu Rinpoche, which is within three months. Many of you probably chant rather much slower, uh, slower than the Tibetan Jomos and Lamas, but I think it would be the best for you to chant it nevertheless. Um, if you can chant for 10,000 times, that's good. If you can chant for 100,000 times, that would be even better. Nowadays, there are different, there are different kinds of uh, platforms that we have, and it's very difficult to get the accurate number. Number. For that reason, it would be the best for you to just submit the number uh, to your groups. Today we will talk about the benefits of the Vajra Guru Mantra, which is really necessary in this degenerated age. The sentient beings are burdened with loads of afflictions and all kinds of earth, wa earth water, fire, and wind-related uh, catastrophes happening all over the world as well. For that reason, it is the best for us to supplicate to Pamasambhava, who is the one that is the essence of the Buddhas of the three times. We need to supplicate him so that he can grant us blessings. <clears throat> that is why uh, I would like to give you the teachings um, on this particular text as well. Apparently, there are two aspects of this text. The first aspect of this text is about the benefits of the Vajra Guru Mantra, and then the second half of the text is a, a, an explanation of all the 12 syllables of the Vajra Guru Mantra. Later, we will further look at each of the syllables and what they represent. This short text, in fact, is a terma concealed by Pamasambhava. 
Speaking of Pamasampava, I'm sure you must be very familiar with him. We should know that he is not a mythical character, nor a character from a folklore. He was a great master who truly appeared in this world throughout the human history. Nowadays, there are people slandering Pamasambhava by saying that, oh, he can't be a real person and um, he must be a character who only existed in folklore, so on and so forth. But those are not a reasonable explanation at all. He was a person who truly existed throughout history. We can see records of him in historical texts, just like Shakyamuni Buddha and a great numbers of the really great people that appeared in this world. They all have the date of birth and date of passing, except that there are different historical records, but in terms of Pamasambhava, the most recognized explanation is that uh, Shantara Kishita first came to Tibet, and at that time, because of all the Maras and evil spirits in Tibet were creating lots of obstacles to Shantara Kishita to spread the Dharma, that is why Shantara Kishita requested Pamasambhava to come to Tibet so that Dharma can be spread it over here. That is why uh, Pamasambhava came to Tibet and subjugated these Maras and the spirits, and then made a firm foundation for Dharma to flourish in Tibet. So when we look at the timeline, Shantara Kishita came to Tibet in 763 CE, and according to some historical books, that since uh, there was a great debate between Buddha Dharma and the Bun tradition, that was the time when Pamasambhava had already came to Tibet. So through so we can look at the timeline in such a way that back in 770, Pamasambhava had already came to Tibet. There is a text called the Samba, uh, uh, Samba Buddhism History or History of Buddhism. It is a very trustworthy source. It was composed by Samba Yixin Juni. I bought this text when I was still studying in Garze. The author had clearly described uh, the dates and records within that text. How long had Pamasambhava stayed in Tibet then? There are different uh, records still. Some um, some great masters from Junampa would say that he stayed there, he stayed in Tibet for eight months, some said 110 years, but the most widely recognized timeline is 56 years. So Pamasambhava stayed in Tibet for 56 years. Uh, within that time period, he went to Visar area and Ando area and Kham area while he was traveling through different areas in Tibet, he concealed various termas as well, and um, he subjugated different spirits, created different gompas for Buddhism, and uh, plant a firm foundation for Dharma to flourish. The gompas, including Samye, and uh, uh, over there, seven people got ordained, and all began from there, Dharma started to flourish, and the root cause for Dharma to flourish 
is because of Pamasambhava. Without Pamasambhava, the Dharma, including Mahati, cannot flourish uh, all over the world right now. Historians nowadays found out that when they investigate into the whole route of how Pamasambhava came to Tibet, they saw a, a very clear route. At first, he subjugated the spirits um, around Yangarsho and uh, different kinds of spirits around um, Nepal and so on. After he attained realization of Mahamudra, he used uh, the purba to subjugate different maras and spirits over there. Inc the different kinds of spirits, including the earth spirits or the mountain spirits of uh, Tanla Yangshu, on the way to Tibet, he purposely irritated this this mountain spirit. He burned some uh, mutton and uh, he kicked over the pot that burned mutton to irritate the spirit because the spirits really hate the foul smell of burnt animal flesh and uh, animal skin. Nowadays we have lots of barbecue and barbecue is a very is as a way to irritate the earth spirits. That is why when the that is why in Tibet we have the habit to burn some juniper twigs if milk that we burn if uh, at times we heat up the milk uh, and they would get boiled and uh, uh, and splash over, uh, we would burn some juniper t uh, twigs to pacify the earth spirits. Anyhow, Pamasabhava specifically and purpose purposely irritated Yala uh, Tanla Yarshu. Um, mountain spirit. I'm not sure if he was the father of uh, the uh, Dakini Wisa or Sarakandro, because Sarakandro's father was also a mountain spirit. Anyhow, that spirit was extremely angry and started to manifest all kinds of threatening signs, including uh, lightning and thunder and so on. Pamasambhava used his threatening mudra and subjugated the spirit. He used various kinds of miraculous um, performances or miraculous power uh, to call for avalanche and so on. So the spirit then later became a protector over there. In fact, in Tibet, the protectors, the mountain spirits and earth spirits in Tibet are different than the other places because they've been subjugated by Pamasambhava. As long as a practitioner do not irritate them or disturb them, they would definitely help the Buddhist practitioners. In terms of the terma of Pamasambhava, we know that within the teachings of Nima, there are two aspects. One aspect is the treasure of teachings, which are the lineage of the tantras, and then the other part, the other aspect is the terma. And terma usually are the precious teachings that's been concealed by Pamasambhava. For example, we have a Rinchen Docho, uh, a collection of Rinchen Do, or a collection of um, terma treasures. It was back in 11th century or maybe 12th century, the great Turtong, Sanji Lama, all the way from the 12th century Sanji Lampa, uh, Sanji Lampa, uh, Sanji Lama, to the 19th century ter great Turtong, whose name is Dechin Lampa. The Dechin Lampa is not the same Dechin Lampa to the one that we're very familiar with, who is uh, the turtle of uh, uh, Doma Monastery, rather with a different turtle. 
Anyhow, there were 100, there were over 100 turtles and their terma all being collected into 63 volumes. And it was edited by Gongce Yangzhou Gyatso as well as Jiang Yang. Jiang Yang Kinsa Wampo. The over 100 turtles and uh, their termas being collected in one particular collection. So we can see that the great numbers of termas that were concealed by Pama Sambhava uh, and then reviewed by the great turtles later on definitely flourish in Tibet. In many different monasteries, such as the monasteries where um, the different turtles would uh, uh, be the abbot or, or, or being over there, um, there are different liturgies, for example, Yamataka, Vajrakilaya, and all kinds of extensive liturgies. And today, this particular text was revealed by Garma Limpa, Garma Limpa, Karma Limpa. Sometimes in the Andoke, or in the Ando uh, accent, we would call Lampa instead of Limpa, but I'm not sure if we should unify it as Lampa or Limpa. Anyhow, Karma Limpa, Karma means activity, and Limpa is a symbol or a name for the turtles. There are five great turtles of the five directions the Dorji Lampa of um, uh, the east, Rinchin Limpa of the south, and uh, uh, Bama Limpa of the, of the west, Garma Limpa of the north, and in the center it was Sanji Limpa. Um, in terms of the translators, there are three great translators, uh, Garwa Bazi and uh, uh, Junri Li Jiangsen, as well as uh, Rang Yi Sida. Out of the three great translators, the Junri Li Jiangsen was the previous translation of Karma Limpa. Karma Limpa's father was also a great turtle. His name is Ninda Sanji. He lived for 125 years. Gamma Limpa started to reveal Terma at the age of 15. He traveled to various places to reveal different termas within the Buddhist, uh, his, the Nyingma history of Buddhism composed by Dujum Rinpoche stated that when he was choosing his consort, he chose the wrong consort, and because of that, uh, his consort um, conspired to poison him and succeeded in that uh, with, with uh, someone else. So his death was rather quite unfortunate, but other than that, he truly reviewed great terma and was a great master. At the time or before he passed away, before Karma Limpa passed away, he passed his all of his termas to his only disciple whose name was uh, Ninda Choji. And uh, Ninda Choji passed down the termas only to one disciple at a time for three generations, and that was also the prediction given by Karma Limpa before he passed away. Now, the different termas of Karma Limpa, including, for example, the hundred uh, deities of um, uh, the, wrath, uh, the hundred of wrathful and peaceful deities, the six bardos, and uh, the Tibetan book of, of dying, a Tibetan book of death. He was around the Gompo area of Tibet, and his dharma is still very much propagated and uh, is flourishing in Amdo and uh, in Kham area. The most popular text of Karma Limpa is mainly the Bardo teachings and the Tibetan 
Tibetan book of uh, of death is has been translated into English in 1911. I had seen the text that's translated back then uh, when I was at uh, the museums in the West. Indeed, the Karmalimpa's terma is rather quite open, especially when it comes to the bardo teachings, for example, the liberation of our hearing um, and uh, many of those teachings. Today, this particular text is rather very short terma that talks about the merits and, and benefits of the Vajraguru mantra. So let's look at the text. Over here it says that I prostrate to the Guru, the Edom, and the Dakini. Yeshitsogyo over here says that I, the lowly woman Yeshitsogyo, made a great outer, inner, and a secret mandala offering and humbly ask. Yeshitsogyo started to request the Dharma. is just like Ananda beside uh, Shakyamuni Buddha. When she was alive, she requested uh, great numbers of Dharma teachings from Pamasambhava. At times of leaving Tibet, Pama Sambhava wrote many great termas on uh, golden volumes or yellow paper and then sealed them with Dakini letters or da Dakini language. <laughs> Nowadays, we see different kinds of terma that's reviewed from sacred mountains, lakes, and even space. It's because of that. Yeshi Tokyo uh, is because Yeshi Tokyo requested those teachings. Though Yeshi Tokyo may appear to be like a common woman, but through her biography, we see that her inequality is indeed quite great. It is quite unfathomable. For the later generations, whenever we read the biography of hers, we would generate great faith. I know that lots of Western Westerners, especially uh, Western uh, female practitioners, are quite encouraged and even empowered by the biography of the Dakini Yishitsogyo, especially when we put her stories and her biographies into the context of um, the time period, which was over 1,000 years ago. In Tibet, just like all over the world, there was the tendency of um, uh, um, of take women lightly. So, considering that women, a woman such as Yeshi Tokyo could be so wise and has such great capacities and has such great merits, is indeed very encouraging. Whenever we study and whenever uh, I encounter people who study uh, Dakini Yeshi Tokyo, they indeed praise the qualities that she has and the spirits that she has and they and all of those researchers or scholars usually would tell me that the story of Yeshi Tokyo definitely brings a new way of contemplation and a new way of looking at women even from the now perspective indeed Dakini Yeshi Tokyo made all kinds of requests and uh, all asked all kinds of questions, and some of the questions are rather quite sharp. Such kinds of questions brings great benefits in requesting Dharma teachings. People around a Dharma teacher, if they can ask sharp questions, if they can request Dharma teachings like Yeshi Tokyo, that would bring great benefits because their requests, their requests would um, lead to the spreading of precious dharma. Yeshi Tsogyo over here says that, well, I make a greater, a great outer, inner, and secret 
mandala. Great outer mandala is the body and inner is speech and the sacred is mind. And sometimes the outer could be the um, the actual mandala that we make and the inner mandala is the body mandala and the sacred mandala is the mandala of great bliss wisdom um, and the body speech and mind is the, the three body mandala that we practiced in the Ningtik preliminary practices after making the three mandalas to after make, uh, offering uh, the three mandalas to Pamasambhava he said that, um, O oh Master Lotus Born, the work you have done for the welfare of all sentient beings here in Tibet is this, in this and in future lives is vast. No one of such extreme kindness has ever come before, nor shall any come again. This is such an accurate description of the merit of Pamasambhava, because Pamasambhava came to Tibet and subjugated all the Maras and spirits, turned them into protectors, and then spread the Dharma teaching over here in Tibet. For over 1,300 years, we do not see anyone else who has such, who made such great um, contribution to Dharma teachings. And then Yeshi Tokyo, with her wisdom, I made observation of it and stated in such a correct way. Throughout history, though, we have uh, Master Tsongkhapa, uh, Longchenpa, and the five great masters of Sakyapa and the great numbers of masters of uh, Jonampa, Milarepa, Marpalotawa, and so on and so forth. But none of them has such a power as Pamasambhava. Just as Shantara Kushita, when he came to Tibet, he really couldn't even build Samye. In the day when he was building Samye, um, with human beings, at night all the ghosts and spirits would destroy all of the constructions that had been done during the day. So we can see that the different spirits and amaras and ghosts roaming about this uh, on this part of the land was rather quite powerful. So Shantara Kashita couldn't really do anything. He could only request Pamaksambhava use his, his miraculous powers to uh, plant a firm foundation for the Dharma to flourish over here. And we can all see that. For that reason, I think Ningmapa, and not just Ningmapa, Gelupa, or the Chinese Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism, whatever kinds of um, schools that we have, as long as the teachings are beneficial to human beings, to our own liberation, then I think the different schools are really of no difference. Uh, no, no difference. Throughout history, we can see that Pamasambhava indeed bestowed us a great benefits, a great kindness, and the qualities that he had and all the contributions he made had never appeared in any other places or um, uh, appeared any time later uh, or other than him. Tibetan Buddhism as well as Buddhism of other places, though well, now that we have Tibetan Buddhism flourish, flourishing uh, over here, it's because of the great kindness of Pamasambhava and Shantara Kashita. People all over the world, the, the Buddhists all over the world, has opportunities to receive such great Vajrayana teachings is indeed rare. In different places, Buddhism has turned into um, only symbols, and maybe there are symbols of monasteries and of um, uh, Buddha statues, but the genuine Dharma teachings are hard to spread. So for that reason, 
I think Tibetan Buddhism flourish all over the world and can be kept um, and in can be kept without any um, decline in the snowy land of Tibet has all kinds of causes and conditions which are related to Pamasambhava. That is why Yeshitokyo stated that Though there are great masters, but um, no one of such extreme kindness has ever come before, nor shall any come again later. We see all kinds of great masters, uh, King Sun Sam Kampo, and uh, uh, different kinds of masters that appeared in this land. But throughout history, the great masters, though, came to this world, but no one can compare to Pamasambhava. I am not praising it because this is my particular school of Buddhism, but I'm stating this because this is simply the history. Yeshi Tsukyo continued to say that the practice you have given us are like essential nectar. Though I'm a lowly woman of this, I have no doubt. Yeshi Tsukyo says that I will have no doubt at all. However, sentient beings in the future generations will have profuse thoughts and tremendous aggression. They would be difficult to tame. They would probably have wrong views towards the Holy Dharma. And in particular, they will um, bless they will have the um, they will blaspheme the supreme teachings of the sacred mantra at that time plague fa famine and war will be widespread amongst uh, sentient beings and in particular China Tibet and Mongolia will be destroyed like ants nests as you may know if you were to destroy the ants nests all the ants would gush out from the destroyed nests because they have nowhere to go when we look at the world uh, when we look at the world now the sentient beings in china tibet and mongolia people would all get out and in terms of the time period, Yeshi Tokyo refers to is that um, at the time the sentient beings' numbers would decline and uh, they would be affected in such a way. Because of the sentient beings has created all kinds of negative deeds, they are suffering, and the sentient beings, the poor sentient beings are suffering. Let's look at the sentient beings nowadays. The wildfire in Hawaii, apparently, there are over 1,000 people reported lost and over 100 people died, and it is still going on. It is still not put out. There are different descriptions or different uh, um, reasons being said about the starting of the fire. Also, uh, fire that's going on in Canada and different places. In a, another part of the world that is over here, we have flood, that many people died from flooding. And another part of the world that is having war currently. So we can see that the sentient beings are indeed not safe, not happy, and they're suffering. In terms of the weather, I really feel the weather is not good. Is not as good as before. It's not the same at all. When there is sun, I feel that I'm roasting under the sun, and in the past, whenever we would go to the meadows and uh, um, sunbathing under the sun, it used to be really comfortable. But nowadays, I feel that. Going 
going out and having those um, holidays in the summer is not necessarily a very comfortable experience because I feel that the whole body aches. On the other hand, when it rains, it feels like someone cracked open a hole in the sky and it pours. Whenever we make observation of the weather, of the afflictions of people, when we make observation of the society, all kinds of catastrophes happen. Though that we hear from the media all kinds of um, propaganda or all kinds of sayings of how we are living happily and so on and so forth, we indeed hear um, the screams of sentient beings because they are suffering. Yeshi Tokyo had already uh, predicted such a time, saying that um, this is a time of terrible suffering that befall on Tibetans. In terms of the future, I really hope that all of you would not go to um, those readers and uh, have predictions on whatever kinds of menial things that you would encounter in daily life, because over here, this is a shudra, this is a place to engage in steady practice of the Dharma, not a place, not a center for predictions, for reading predictions. Nowadays, there are people who have been burnt uh, by hot water on their lips or had a nightmare, they would go to different readers to read their dreams. Around Serta area, there are self-claimed mirror readers. Uh, there, there are a kind of um, predicting prediction method that is, that is called uh, mirror reading prediction. And nowadays, because people are so drawn to making predictions, uh, there are lots of self-claimed mirror readers. In Duduling, you know, over here, the Chinese Sangha, um, there are people um, that would self-claim that they are good at making predictions. When Ponzo Rinpoche was still with us, he did not like any of those uh, mo predictions or fate telling or speaking of miraculous powers that they have. Those are the things that he disliked the most. Nowadays, I heard that there are people going around um, with the going around um, propagating their own names with, with such titles. Anyhow, the management team is currently talking about how to um, how to ask this group of people to leave or how to uh, make different kinds of regulations. But I think this particular phenomenon really shows that how foolish we are, how people nowadays really are drawn to different kinds of activities, including mo prediction and uh, um, the readings. They would rely on it only, and if you were to do that, if you were to come to the so-called Dakinis or uh, other mole prediction readers, it is not the kind of habit that we agree with. On top of that, different lamas that enjoys, that really enjoy doing all kinds of readings and more predictions. Um, really shows that they are not a good fit to be staying in the Shudra. Um, I don't really want to speak too much of it, but uh, I would like to share some of the information on it. If there are people who don't engage in true uh, steady contemplation and uh, practice and so on and so forth. There are people spreading fear by saying that, oh, this is really the last, the 
the end of, of the world, if we're reaching the last stage, and human beings are going to uh, be destroyed, <coughs> and uh, there uh, is going to be more catastrophes next year and the year after, we'll have more obstacles, and so on and so forth. If you had spread such rumors, I hope that you can change your speech from today onwards, and then um, gear your gear your actions to study contemplation and practice. If you can do that, I can give you another opportunity. If you don't change, then this kind of this kinds of people cannot stay here anymore because the shudra is a place for you to study. It is not a place for you to speak of all kinds of of rumors. People nowadays have the habit to say that, oh, I got this mo prediction from so-and-so toku, and I got so-and-so reading. And they would wonder, oh, why did I burn my lips when I drink water? Why did I have a nightmare? Why did I fall from the stairs? Why is it that I did so and so? People kept on asking those from more predictions. I think this is very foolish. Now, I've had two major operations, and uh, I had not gone to any of those readers to get a more prediction. I simply chanted some uh, some mantras and then um, I did not make my decision on whether I should uh, whether I should get the operation through mo prediction. I simply did a mo prediction to to say to see whether I should chant this mantra or that mantra. Now we need to use our wisdom to distinguish what we should do. To uh, we need to use our wisdom to make decisions on what we need to do. For example, if you already see that there is a tumor, then you know what to do. Uh, I had already translated two texts on mode predictions. One is the mode prediction of uh, Mandushri and the other one of Avalokiteshvara. I can do it, but I think we need to have wisdom and we need to uh, focus more on the static contemplation instead of more predictions. Yeshi Togyo then continued to say that you have spoken of many ways to remedy these afflictions, but beings in the future will have no time to practice. Now, you had already, so Yeshi Togyo said that to Wapama Sambhava, you have already um, given teachings such as the Purba and such as the Wrathful Pama Sambhava, as well as a great numbers of extensive liturgy, but the beings of the Dark Age are extremely busy, and even if they want to practice, and there are all kinds of obstacles. What kinds of obstacles? For example, when we want to practice, uh, there are all kinds of um, obstacles in, uh, involved in the conflicts of schools of Buddhism, the conflicts of ethnics, and uh, the, the conflicts of people having different intentions, and the conflicts of not having sufficient uh, provisions. On top of that, our actions and behaviors are not in accordance to, to the Dharma. And uh, that leads to uh, the incapacity in starting the Dharma teaching, uh, the Dharma practice as well as ending them well. At that time, when all the vicious things and all kinds of obstacles are blocking us from practicing the Dharma, the only way to to in engage in practice is through relying on the mantra of Pamasambhava. So he over here says that, so uh, over here Yeshi Tsoga said those who have a, a slight incli inclination towards practice will be beset by powerful obstacles. The beings who will not get along with one another, supplies and materials will be insufficient. Such terrible times as these will be extremely difficult to avert. In such times, Guru, what are the benefits of relying solely upon the practice of the Vajra Guru Mantra? For the benefit of the people who are weak, who have weak intellect in the future, I humbly 
entreat you to tell us. And then Pamasambhava says that, O oh Lady of Faith, you who have faith, what you say is absolutely true. In future times, in uh, such future times, that practice will definitely be of short and long term benefit of uh, long, ter long term benefit for sentient beings. Although I have concealed many earth treasures, water treasures, and rock treasures, sky treasures, and so on, which contains unfathomable peace instructions and methods of practice. In degenerated times, it will be terrible. It will be terribly difficult for fortunate beings to find the conditions and the circumstances to meet with the teachings. This is a sign of peace merit is running out. Now, in terms of earth um, treasure, it is the treasures that's been hidden in places such as caves. Uh, for example, Ponce uh, revealed some of the treasures that's been concealed in caves, uh, like the uh, peaceful practice of uh, the Manjushri and, and Purba practice, um, the places such as the, the term that's reviewed within water, such as the Vajrasattva practice that we have um, was discovered or reviewed from a lake. In terms of rock, Terma, um, Ponsugur Rinpoche reviewed a um, uh, reviewed a, 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 a curricula liturgy that was from Timpu. In terms of the sky terma or space terma, it was once that Ponsugur Rinpoche was holding a katak and he waved that katak in the space within a short period of time, we see that Ponsugur Rinpoche hold a very small Buddhist statue. Ponsugur Rinpoche was with us. I think Kampo Deva was also there. And there was another time Ponsugur Rinpoche uh, was practicing and took offering with all of us, and uh, uh, he waved the katak in space. And then it feels like the Buddha statue just descend from space. Right away, Ponsugur Rinpoche uh, catched it. So there are all different kinds of termas, and uh, the different turtles would reveal them. Now, some of the words are written, some of the words are written in symbols or in the Dakini words, Dakini language, and not all of the terma or not all of the liturgy would appear, but because of the causes and conditions, then you would be able to write it down, just as some of the translator's notes um, would be rather quite condensed, but each of the symbols <coughs> would represent many different meanings. That is why many great turtles, for example, there are turtles who are very good at writing, who has such um, good methods of writing, and then their liturgy would be easy to listen to, and they're uh, very melodious. If the turtle who reviewed those termas are not necessarily good writers, then those liturgy uh, doesn't really sound very beautiful. Now, as a translator, when I translate this text from Tibetan language into Chinese language, if my Chinese language is not good enough, then my translation may not be that melodious, so to speak. Similarly, Ponsugur Rinpoche used to say that so-and-so turtle is excellent in writing, and the terma that so-and-so turtle wrote is really beautiful. When it comes to Karma Limpa, he is a great, he's a wonderful turtle, and uh, I believe that those of you who listen to the liberation of my hearing 
at times of chanting it, people would say that this particular liturgy is so beautiful to listen to and it is easy to understand as well. Whenever we look at a terma, there are termas that's easy to listen to and they're beautiful to look at or listen to as well, but not necessarily all of them are like such. It really depends on the turtone as well. There are true turtones, there are charlatan turtones as well. Composed a text, actually, uh, many texts on making observation of turtles. When I just came here, I kept on reading it. Uh, I believe it is a text called The Pure Water, um, The Treasury of the Pure Water. Also uh, talks about how to make observation of the turtles. In fact, the turtles are quite aware of their capacities. Some of the termas that they review could be very beneficial to the sentient beings if the turtle is um, has quite great power and great um, activity. On the other hand, there are turtles who review termas, but they're not of any benefits nor harm to the sentient beings. On top of that, there are turtles, the so-called turtles that's been blessed by Maras. In such a way, the so-called termas that they reveal would be harmful to sentient beings. For that reason, we need to be very careful with the teacher that we, re that we rely on, especially when we don't have the capacity to observe observe whether they're the genuine turtle or not. In the past, there are there were some true turtles who spread dharma in mainland area, and some charlatan uh, turtles went to mainland as well. But the, the fake turtles would soon reveal themselves through their actions. Similarly, in terms of tokus, uh, since the Chinese Religious Bureau and all kinds of bureaus that is in charge of uh, distributing certificates to the tokus. Some of the tokus are genuine reincarnations. Some of them are not necessarily so, though that they may have certificates uh, being given by the bureaus. Because we can look at their actions. Some of the so called tukus probably don't even have the proper actions like a, a, norm, like a, a, a normal Buddhist. I don't necessarily want to speak the faults of the others. I simply want to point it out so that you won't be fooled. Because there are people at the very beginning, they have faith, but their faith can be um, taken advantage of. And I think that is quite a pity. So we need to use our wisdom to make observation of the teacher that we rely on. I have no jealous of I have no jealousy whatsoever. Um, I am not saying this because I want to please the benefactors nor the disciples. This is my wholehearted advice so that you would not be fooled by the uh, teachers that are not qualified. Though over here, uh, Pamasamava said that I have already concealed many treasures in different places, but in degenerated times, the sentient beings do not have those conditions 
and the circumstances to meet those teachings, that's a sign of being Samaritan is running out. Because of lacking all kinds of causes and conditions, lots of the terma were not reviewed by him. That is really also a sign of the lack of merit of the sentient beings. And Pamasamava continued to say that, however, in such times as those, this essential Vajra Guru mantra, if recite with vast bodhicitta aspiration in great sacred places, in monasteries, on the peak of high mountains, and the shores of the vast rivers, in places inhibited by gods, demons, and evil spirits, at the heads of valleys, geographic, ge geophysical junctions, and so on, by Nakpas, by the mantra chanters with unbroken samaya vow, holding monastic, hold, uh, holding monastics, faithful men, women of fine qualities, and the and the like, however many times, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, 10 million, 100 million, etc., will bring inconceivable benefits and powers. So you can chant it in your car, you can chant it at your home, you can chant it at whatever place and wherever you would like. Also, um, whomsoever you are, maybe monastics, maybe lay practitioners, maybe uh, women of fine qualities. Over here, it points out that uh, there are, are women with different fine qualities, including faith, wisdom, um, precepts or fine characteristics. These kinds of people could all chant the mantra of Pamasambhava, and there are inconceivable power and qualities. Now, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, 10 million, 100 million, etc., will bring conceivable benefits and powers. What's the benefits or effects of it? Countries everywhere will be protected from all plague, famine, warfare, armed violence, poor harvests of bad omens, and evil spells. All kinds of evil signs will be dispelled. That is why we need to chant the Pamasamava mantra. When we look at the news nowadays, we, we see sufferings increasing within human realm. So when you chant the, mantra, the Vajra, man, Vajra uh, Guru Mantra, rain will fall on time, harvests and, life, and uh, livestock will be excellent and lands will prosper in this life, future lives and on the pathway of Barda, fortunate pra practitioners will meet me again and again, at best in actuality or else in visions, and at very least in dreams, having gradually perfected the levels and paths, there is no doubt that they will join the ranks of male and female awareness holders, the Rinzins, the Rixens and uh, uh, Ngayabling, in Ngayabling. There was a story that I would like to share with you. In a really wealthy family, there was one servant. That servant is in charge of herding the cows and uh, goats. This wealthy family usually would invite some great masters, asking them to bestow empowerments and uh, giving Dharma teachings. There is this once that this family invited a, a great Mahaati um, master. A second reincarnation of a great Mahayati uh, master. 
This servant asked other people to take care of the herding business, and then he himself went to see this great master in his in the master's tent. The master asked, well, what do you need? Why are you coming to me? What do you need? And the servant said that I need Mahaati. And then the Lama asked him again, what do you really need? He said that I really need Mahaati, though that he doesn't know what Mahaati is. And then the Lama said that, okay, then come here. So he said that, I will give you the Mahaati. And then he recited Oma Hong Benza Guru Bama Sudo Hong at the year side of, of him and asked him to chant this wholeheartedly after he returned. For that reason, he practiced under the instruction of that Lama, he chanted this mantra whenever and whatever um, he's doing at times of hurting, at times of work, and at times of even sleeping. That is why he was renowned as Banza Guru. Um, locally, he was known as Banza Guru because he chanted so much. And then later, he told the family, his uh, landlord, saying that I dreamt of Pama Guru. And, um, Thank you so much for taking care of me, and uh, I shall go now. On the second day, he, his, his tent, out, uh, inside his tent, there appeared rainbows. He was the one who directly sees Pama Guru, the Pama Sambhava. There are stories uh, as such and examples as such in Tibet. We can see that even if we don't understand what it means by chanting mantras, just as when we studied the merits of the uh, mantra of Avalokiteshvara, if you were to chant the gurus, if you were to chant the mantras every day and at all times, then the quality is quite vast. The merits are quite vast. vast. Within our life, we should practice and try our our very best wholeheartedly and thoroughly. It is really important to supplicate to um, Pamasambhava. Every year, I try my best to encourage all of you to chant different Vajra Sattva, uh, to chant the Pama uh, Sambhava mantras, such as the wrathful ones and such as the mantra for over 20 years. And we've studied many different texts of the Pama Sambhava. At times of chanting the mantra, it's best for you to see the pictures and the tankas and so on, or even statues. This would be meaningful if you can chant in such a way because the mantra has the quality of, for example, people would like you because of your energy field is really good. There are people who don't have very positive energy fields, and when people get in touch with them, they don't even want to talk to them. They don't even want to share a room with them. They don't even want to sit with them. If you want to be liked for this lifetime and and future lifetimes, you need to chant the Pama Sambhava mantra. On top of that, if you want to um, obtain food, obtain wealth, when you have a short of food or wealth and enjoyments, uh, you should chant the Pamasambhava mantra as well, uh, because all of those food, wealth, and enjoyments would appear effortlessly. Within the termas of Pamasambhava, there are lots of practices of uh, Zambalas, of the wealth deity because they are of no different than Pamasambhava. After chanting for um, thousands, ten thousands or more times per day, you will bring others under your influence with your brilliance, and blessings and powers will continuously and unobstructedly obtained. If you want to tame the others, if you want to be able to give blessings to the others, you need to practice the mantra wholeheartedly and continuously. Many of you who studied for many years for um, and studied the 5G thesis, of course, it's really important to study it, but what's really important is to have your own mind merged with the Lama's mind or the 
deity's mind and merge with the protector's mind. If you were to only have the knowledge but not have any of the practice, it would be very difficult for you to benefit the sentient beings and propagate the Dharma. You need to tame your own mind. You, if you don't tame your own mind, the more you study, the more you'll be like Devadatta. So we need to practice um, to tame our mind so that our mind would be one with the Lama, would be one with the deity, would be one with Pamasambhava, and then your mind would be moist by the blessings of Pamasambhava um, and be moist by the power of Dharma. In such a way, whatever kinds of obstacles or favorable conditions that occurs in your life could be transformed onto the path of enlightenment. And at that time, once you're truly being one with the Dharma, even a joke told by you, other people would really like it and accept it. And then you can benefit sentient beings. In this day and life, in this day and time, simply by relying on faith is difficult. If you were to rely only on theory, yet you have no realization, it's very difficult for you to propagate, propagate Dharma and benefit sentient beings. Not only that, your own practice would not go smoothly. For that reason, we need to practice. We need to chant for a hundred Thousand, uh, hundred, uh, thousands of times and hundreds of thousands of times. If you perform 100,000, 10 million or more recitations, the three worlds will come under your power. The three levels of existence will fall under your glorious sway. Gods and spirits will be at your bidding, and the four modes of enlightened activity will be accomplished without hindrance, and you will be able to bring immeasurable benefits to all sentient beings in whatever ways are needed. In the fall time, we will, usually in the fall time, we have this tradition of studying Vajrayana teachings all together. Uh, around that time, I think it would be the best for us to study the way of uh, entering the way of Mahayana. This is the text, but I think this text would be a bit too much to finish within a month of time. For that reason, we will study half of it, and then maybe the next year another half of it, I think it will be good. And uh, we have some extra time to study the mantra of Pamasambhava and the qualities of Pamasambhava and uh, the supplications and so on. In this time, I, I think it would be the best preparation for us to um, engage in retreat because the retreat is really important. During retreat time, I think some kempos and kemos and some people tend to roam about outside. They would travel around or go to different teachers. This is quite a pity because the opportunities as such to engage in group retreat practice is quite rare. I'm not stopping you, uh, but I would like to share with you what I did back then. I relied on Ponsa Grimbache at that time. Um, I relied on Ponsa Grimbache for 20 years, and um, around that time, I had there were many uh, empowerments bestowed by other lamas around this area as well. I really wanted to go around and um, listen to different teachings given by other teachers as well, um, but I didn't. For example, I didn't even receive any of the oral transmissions from Kampo Deba. The commentary made by Kampo Deba on the treasury of which fulfilling jewel and the commentary on the treasury of Pith instructions, as well as the commentary on the aspiration for the dharmas to for the dharma to flourish um, there were about three to four really extensive commentaries composed by Kampo Deba, but I I requested all of them but I did not receive even one of those or transmissions and people would ask me since you have such great faith to Kampo Deba and you requested the teachings why don't you have our transmissions I told them that well on one hand 
It was because I was teaching the Han Chinese, and I worry that if I were to go to different places, their um, mind and their um, progress of listening would be influenced. I don't want to do that. On the other, while I was relying on the teacher, um, on my Lama, though that there are different teachers giving different oral transmissions and empowerments, but I kept on thinking that my mind needs to be stable. I should not. My mind should not waver here and there because I heard this and that. I only want to listen to the teachings from um, the teacher that I have the most faith. Though sometimes I wanted to receive more teachings, but I really didn't go anywhere else at all. There was a period of time when I when my health was not good, and um, uh, we were practicing together in retreat and uh, supplicated uh, and practiced supplication, I really feel that the energy and the power of blessings are different. That is why I really hope that we can chant more of this practice, or this, this uh, uh, practice more together. To continue, over here, um, Pamasamava says that if you can do 30 million, 70 million, or more recitations, you will never be separated from Buddhas of the three times, nor never apart from me. The eight classes of gods and spirits will obey your orders, praise your words, and accomplish whatever task you entrust them. I remember that. The, most of the chantings and practices within the words of my perfect teacher or the preliminary practices usually is about a few tens of thousands, but for the mantra of Masambhava, the requirement within preliminary practice is uh, 10 million. Um, this time, since we requested all of you to practice the Pamasambhava mantra, I contemplated and I was thinking to myself if I should also make the aspiration to finish chanting 100,000 times. I'm sure you also would have such kind of, um, you also probably feel that there are a lot of mantras to be finished. Indeed, when it comes to practicing virtuous deeds, our powers are rather quite weak. When I was translating the first the first volume of the Wish Fulfilling Treasury, um, uh, Lama Wande from my monastery came to me and uh, made the aspiration that I would like to chant 100 million times of Amitabha mantra. Please grant blessings, or please bless my mantra. My mala. I asked him, how many mantras have you finished? He said that, well, I made the aspiration to finish chanting 100 million times of Pamasamava mantra in front of Kampo Lashik. That was around eight, that was around the 70s or the 80s, and I have already completed it. And then later, I made the aspiration uh, in front of um, my lama for 100 million times of uh, money mantra, as well as um, 10 million times of mantra Shri mantra. Also, I've already completed it. I completed many of uh, the mantras. Now I would like to start 100 million times of uh, Amitabha mantra. I think I should be okay. He is around my age. He's not 70 yet. We are the same human being. We're, we're the same. We're both human beings, and we're around the same age. Yet there are people who had already accumulated uh, probably billions of mantras, so hundreds of millions of mantras together. But when it comes to us, when we need to make aspiration to chant for ten, uh, a hundred thousand times, we would. Um, 
we would uh, wonder whether we should we would be able to finish it and so we can see that we definitely have a gap um, there is a gap between us but we can do it we should be able to do it over here Pamasambhava says that if you can chant so and so times then the Buddhas of three times will never apart from you they class in gods and spirits will be your orders raise your words and accomplish whatever task you entrust them. The people's powers are very much different. There are people who can accomplish every uh, accomplish whatever they wish for, and there are people who can't even accomplish a little bit. And the differences between whether we have blessings and we have the eight classes and the God spirits that is that our orders. At best, practitioners will attain the rainbow body falling, uh, failing that at the time of death, mother and child luminosities will meet. This is taught in um, the Mahati teachings. The recognized, the recognized self luminosity will merge with the mother luminosity. Uh, at that moment, one will right away attain liberation when the mother and child luminosity would meet. And at the very ba and at the very least, they will see me in the bardo, and all their perceptions that have been uh, all their perceptions that having been liberated into their essential nature, they will be reborn in Naya Bling and accomplish immeasurable pe benefits for sentient beings. Well, think about if you need you want to make the aspiration, but I really encourage you for those of you who don't have other specific tasks, it will be the best for you to finish hundred thousand times of this mantra. Now we have three months. Within three months, if you can finish about a um, hundred thousand times, that would be really wonderful. Um, for each of the day, you could probably chant about five thousand times and then you can finish it. If you can chant together with us, that would be really wonderful. I know that lots of the Tibetans had already made the aspiration. If you would like to expand your merit, and if you would like to have the drop of your own merit to be merged in the ocean of the merits of all of us, it would be the best for you to chant it together. It would be the best to make the aspiration. Now, that if you can chant for over 100,000 times, because many people this time would supplicate to Pamasambhava, then lots of the catastrophes and even obstacles that is right before our eyes would be reverted, would be changed. I re really want to talk a little more of it. <coughs> Maybe we should stop here today. The previous parts are about the benefits and qualities of the Vajra Guru Mantra. Later, we will talk about the explanations of each syllables, and tomorrow we'll talk about that. Chupum solen drova drugare shoy.